back. Oh, and welcome. Dr. Patel, I don't know where I dropped off, so I'm going to say everything again because it's so important. Um, yeah, let's start from the beginning. Let's start over. So we are really honored to be here today uh, to talk about Melanoma Research Foundation and everything that the organization does. And they have an exciting gala that's coming up on October 20th in New York and is going to be honoring these wonderful professional partners, including Dr. Portello is going to be awarded Influencer of the Year. And we'll talk a little bit more about that and all the fantastic things that he does um, as a skin health professional. But first, I wanted to share a little bit about Melanoma Research Foundation, in case you didn't know. Uh, that organization has done so much to further skin health and, and, and safety. There's been 22 million, and that is million dollars, that the, the foundation has helped to provide towards peer-reviewed research awards. That's led to patents. That's led to clinical trials, FDA-approved treatments. So it's a really wonderful and important um, organization that, that we're all happy to be a part of supporting. Also, many of you recognize this face, um, the influencer of the year, Mr. Dr. Dustin Portello. <laughs> he is the a board certified dermatologist. I'm gonna talk about your bio and there's so many wonderful things here. Um, but he is a, not only a board certified dermatologist, but a dermatologic surgeon. Um, he's been certified through the American Board of Dermatology, which is the largest group of uh, board certified dermatologists. He has a practice in Boise, Idaho. Um, and we were having a chat earlier around weather and, 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 and perceptions about needing to be sun safe in different climates. So I'm sure he could tell us um, what he's hearing from, from patients that, that are coming in in Idaho. But he has established treasure Valley Dermatology that was established in 2018. In addition to all of that, I don't know how he has time to be influencer of the year, but he <laughs> is a Mohs micrographic surgeon. I'd love to hear a little bit more about this, but it's really mastering a delicate technique of caring for the skin. And, and when, when, when you're faced with melanoma and, and trying to remove that, making sure that your, your skin um, is, is the best that it can be after. Um, he has keen interest in, in skin cancer prevention. I believe you may even have um, a tattoo to prove your, your passion <laughs> for this space. Uh, but he has taken this passion to social media. And I think that's so important, so powerful, how you're really reaching so many beyond um, your practice and your patients that you're seeing every single day. But he's taken that to, um, to social media to help and encourage uh, sunscreen and skin checks. And, and sun safety and has lectured nationally and internationally around skin cancer and melanoma prevention. So thank you, Dr. D Portella, for everything that you do. Thank you for joining us today. And, and I'd love for you to actually tell us a little bit more about yourself and if there's anything else you wanna share with the audience. Yeah, thank you very much, Echo. It's, it's a privilege to be doing this live and to be talking about the upcoming uh, gala to benefit melanoma research. and. The, um, you know, the genesis for all of the work that I do, it really came from my skin cancer surgery training because these patients will come in both young and old and we're seeing a lot more younger patients coming in with skin cancer, whether that's basal cell carcinoma, which is the most common, squamous cell carcinoma, um, and then of course melanoma, which is the most deadly form of skin cancer that takes the most number of lives. And so when I do these surgeries and I watch what patients go through when we're taking off pieces of their ears or their nose or doing large you know, spots on the scalp, and I, I just know that the way these patients suffer, especially if they're getting multiple skin cancers, you know, we know that there's some really good data on prevention of skin cancer, but it has to start at younger ages. And that was one of the big drivers for me to get on social media and start talking to the younger generation about the types of behaviors and things that will prevent them from getting skin cancer, you know, 20, 30 years down the road, because it's really about the behaviors that you adopt, you know, in our younger lives that really define the rest of our lives. And that's true, not just for skin cancer prevention, of course, but for so many behaviors in life. So I wanted to get on social media and share that and help prevent more people from having to go through skin cancer surgery, essentially, I'd love to put myself out of a job, so. I think that's such a powerful message for everyone. And, and 
I definitely grew up at a time where, you know, we weren't having that, that conversation being younger and you weren't thinking about it um, until, until later in life. And, and I have kids as well. So, so important for what you're doing um, to help further the message and, and starting younger to your point. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd love to understand from your perspective to be recognized by Melanoma Research Foundation for the work that you're doing and, and getting Influencer of the Year Award. Can you just tell us a little bit about what that means to you personally? Yeah, I mean, it really is an honor to be recognized by the Melanoma Research Foundation. Uh, you know, I find a great deal of value in the work. It's personally fulfilling to me, but it's always, you know, validating to have another organization, especially one as respected as the Melanoma Research Foundation, recognize the work that I'm doing as being a significant way to help reduce the risk of melanoma in the future for people. And then also to participate with them and raise money to help prevent more people from ever having to, you know, die from melanoma. We want to come up with better treatments. We want better screening. We want, you know, better um, protocols on all of those things. And so it really is a privilege to partner with an organization like the MRF to, you know, get the word out there and to um, be recognized that way. Yeah, that, that's so true. And, and everyone here, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're so glad to have you. And I think it's a privilege that we have Dr. Fratella, Influencer of the Year um, from MRF with us today. And we'd love to give you an opportunity if anyone has any questions to take advantage of this time and, and having your, your board certified dermatologist at hand to, to ask any questions for, for Dr. Portella. Um, again, we are here to talk about Melanoma Research Foundation, everything that this wonderful organization does to help with that, that um, skin cancer melanoma uh, prevention. And there is a, a gala coming up, as we mentioned, October 20th for anyone that's in the New York area. Um, I know we've got people joining us from, from all around. Um, but there's an opportunity to, to give back to this organization so they can continue the, the great work that they're doing. Um, as Dr. Fratella put it, to, to put all of us um, you know, out, of a, out of a job if we can help to, to prevent melanoma and skin cancer. Totally. And while we wait for a question or two to come in, I just want to recognize one of the comments that came up from um, one of the viewers named Tracy who said that um, they had stubbed their toe and were misdiagnosed as having an infection for five years. And it ended up being, it looks like melanoma that went to stage four, but she recently had a clean PET scan. And I'm really grateful to hear that Tracy, that you've got a clean PET scan. And that just speaks to the need for excellent treatments and of course, better screening. And if anybody has something on their skin that's not behaving, it's not, you know, resolving the way that it should definitely get a second opinion. But this is why we need the Melanoma Research Foundation and other groups like it to help raise funds to come up with these treatments that can take somebody from a stage four melanoma and help put them into remission. So I wish you the best, Tracy, on your continued fight with melanoma. And I'm elated to hear about your success so far. And Dr. Patel, I do see another question that's come in. I'm talking about working from home most days and, and do you need to apply sunscreen in the morning if you're working from home? So I, I get this question a lot and my answer is yes, I do think everybody should put sunscreen on in the morning. When you're working from home, you're usually not in the house all day long every single day. And so I think that you're gonna go out, you're gonna maybe get the mail, maybe you're gonna run and get a coffee in the morning or do something and that's incidental sun exposure that happens cumulatively over your lifetime adds up to increase your risk of skin cancer. And so if you just make sunscreen a part of your daily skincare routine, you're brushing your teeth, you're putting on sunscreen, preferably one that feels great, that you like to use, you're never gonna be caught off guard. Sunscreen is safe and it's highly effective. So you, you know, if you're working from home, maybe you're not necessarily thinking about reapplying halfway through the day, but just putting it on every morning, getting in that habit makes a difference. And I do encourage my patients to do that. That's great advice. And, and I'm also seeing Emily here. You, you talked about the reason you got uh, into social media is to, to kind of influence the conversation earlier for people. And she's asking if um, she didn't start practicing sun safety when she was young. Is it too late now? No, and we do have data. And a lot of the really good data on sunscreen has come from Australia, where they have some of the highest rates of skin cancer. And they've shown that 
Starting sunscreen, regular sunscreen use at any age does help to decrease your risk of developing skin cancer or additional skin cancers going forward. So if you're 55 and you've had a skin cancer on your cheek, wearing sunscreen every day now can help to prevent skin cancers going forward. So I would say it's never too late. Okay, I, I see another question here. This is, uh, I, I think, Yaya, Yaya Bain. Okay, and I, I know you're going to know what this means, Dr. Patella, but Mohs has been traditionally used mainly for certain cases of BCC and SCC, um, but, is, but is growing in the use for melanoma. Are you doing Mohs on melanoma cases? So I don't personally do Mohs on melanoma. There's a couple reasons for it. Um, it requires some special equipment that I just don't keep stocked in my office. And it wasn't something that was part of my residency program. We weren't doing Mohs on melanoma. More programs are starting to incorporate that over the last five years, but not everyone is doing it. I'm fortunate in my area to have another Mohs surgeon that I can collaborate with who did his surgical training with probably the premier Mohs fellowship in the country where they're really pioneering Mohs for melanoma. And so I'm able to work with this other surgeon so that my patients with melanoma that need Mohs surgery, they are getting that done. I'm just not the one performing that. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, I also see a question from Jen. Um, what increases risk of melanoma and are there genetic factors? There certainly are genetic factors. And so if you have more than one first degree relative, so that's like brother, sister, mom, dad, um, if you have more than one first degree relative who's had a melanoma, particularly at younger ages, you really should consider some genetic screening. And that's a conversation to have with your doctor because there are five or six different genetic mutations that can increase your risk for melanoma, regardless of sun exposure. It's not a guarantee, but it does increase your risk. And then we know that sunburns, especially at younger ages, can increase your risk, your lifetime risk of developing melanoma. And I don't want people to come away thinking, I had a couple bad sunburns as a kid. It's guaranteed that I'm going to get melanoma. That's not the case. Um, I don't have the stat right off the top of my head. But if your lifetime risk of developing melanoma is 0.2%, and that was doubled by a couple of bad sunburns, you're still only at 0.4%. So as an absolute risk, it's not huge, but it's a double of your relative risk. So Early you know, sunburns, intense sun exposure, and then chronic sun exposure plays probably a little bit less of a role than it does with basal cell or squamous cell. But there's multiple factors that can play into whether you're at risk for melanoma. Okay, that's very helpful for everyone to, to know. And I, I think Dr. Bertel, we have time for one more question. And I okay. see um, this question's from Lisa. Why do you need skin checks every three months for two years and then only once a year? So everybody does this a little bit differently. And there's, you know, recommendations from different organizations as to how frequently you do the screening. But once you've had a melanoma, uh, particularly if it's an invasive melanoma, then the risk of it coming back, even if it was cut out with clean margins, because melanoma can be sneaky, the risk of that coming back is greatest over the first two years. And so that's when we're most diligent about screening. And for many patients, after the two years, and then at five years, they'll go to once a year. So there's nuance. If your dermatologist doesn't follow that exact you know, pattern of screening, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You have to have a good relationship with your doctor that you both feel comfortable with the, the level of screening. But ultimately, after a melanoma diagnosis, close and frequent follow-up is the best thing. So that's um, another, another great um, information for everyone. And what I'm hearing from you is you know, prevention and really focusing on that. Um, and then making sure that you're working closely with your dermatologist partner um, on, on treatment and, and follow up from there. Um, thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to answer some of these questions from, from everyone that's joined us today. And reminder, October 20th, that's the Melanoma Research Foundation Gala. There is still time to get tickets if you're going to be in the New York area on October 20th. Um, however, you can also donate to this organization and, and they're putting all of your 
your donations to really good use. Um, and we have exciting news to share. There's been an anonymous donor um, that is matching 100% any donations um, that, that everyone is giving to Melanoma Research Foundation. So you're able to not only donate to a really good cause, it's going to be at 100% match. And your donations, of course, are tax deductible, which is always fantastic. And we're going to drop a, a link into the, the comments here um, that you can click on um, to, to donate, again, to, to help further support research in this space. And want to say one more time, congratulations again. Um, and today is a testament of, of, again, what you do and giving of your time just to help um, educate everyone on what we can be doing. So thank you so much, um, Dr. Patella. Congratulations on your award. Thank you. It's my privilege. And when that link pops up, I am going to share it across my social media platforms as well. So in my Instagram stories, it'll be over on Twitter as well. So if you don't catch it from the, the comments, just uh, follow along with social and we'll make sure that you get the opportunity to donate to a really excellent cause. That's fantastic. And, and we'll do the same. We'll, we'll share it through AltaMD. And want to thank everyone for joining us today. Donate today, double, double points by doing so. And it's been fantastic to see you, Dr. Portello, and we'll see you in October. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Bye, everyone.